praise God. I need y'all to pull on God with me, please. I really need y'all to pull on God with me on today, praise God. I know God wants to do something in this place on today. A lot of things been going on in the atmosphere, praise God. You don't understand when the enemy has a, 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 a great attack on women, praise God. In any atmosphere you go into with a lot of women, Lord God, it's always a stronghold in the atmosphere, and it's hard and it's tough sometimes, whether it be in the church, whether it be, I used to be in, in, in the military, anytime you're addressing women, there's always an attack, and it's always tough, praise God, and we got to come in here, and we got to do this thing together. I need y'all to help me pull on God on tonight. We, when God wants to have a miracle in here on tonight, we've got to have a miracle on tonight, so y'all help me pull, I can't do this by myself. I need y'all. There's no way possible what the enemy is doing in the earth today that we have, we cannot be divided. I need y'all on tonight. I need y'all. I really do praise God. Pull on God with me. Hallelujah. Praise God. I love y'all. Thank you, Holy Ghost God. Thank you, Lord God. I want to say this first. I want to say this first. You know, a lot of people don't know me. I know sometimes I come off as strange and weird. I get that everywhere I go, and, and that's okay, because you know, God got weird and strange people that obey him. I can use the weird, I can use the strange. I don't want to offend nobody, ever. I don't. And I just want to say this before I move on. Uh, you know, sometimes God would tell a man to lay on his side for 390 days, and we don't understand it. And then he'll tell him to turn to the other side and lay for a 40 day, another 40 nights, days. We don't understand it. Sometimes God will tell you to do something, and me, and I don't understand it, but let me say this to everybody because God wants to do something here tonight, and I don't want anything to stop his flow. Everybody, please, and I'm so serious, everybody who got offended because of the outfit that I wore, and it might not have been the, the same colors that everybody else wore, but God tells me to do things differently sometimes, and I'm sorry for anybody, anybody that got offended when I didn't wear the same colors. I don't know why God makes me do what he do. But I know there's a, ha, e, ah. but now I know there's a blessing in the mandate. There's a blessing when you obey God. You may not understand it. I don't understand it sometimes. But we have to obey God in this hour. I meant nobody any offense, please. But right now I need you to help me to pull on God. Praise God. And believe me, whatever God got me to do, why he did it, it's going to show itself on tonight. Amen. Amen. So I just want us to all be together on tonight. I'm so very, very sorry for any offense. I'm so sorry. Please, you can have your seat. Hey, hallelujah. Glory be to God. Thank you, Lord God. Lord, I praise you. I worship you, Lord God. Lord, I don't charge you foolish for anything, Lord God. You know what you're doing, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God. You know the yoke that got to be broken in this atmosphere, Lord God. God, move by your power. Move by your might, praise God. Do what you came to do, Lord God. Get Alicia out the way, Lord God. They don't need to see my flesh, Lord God. They need to see your anointing, praise God. Hallelujah, Lord God. Lord, I thank you, Lord God. Hey, hey, oh, coach, thank God. Hallelujah, Lord God. Hey, oh, God. We pulled out and bind every stronghold, praise God. Satan, you are a defeated foe, praise God. You've been disarmed, praise God. Hallelujah, Lord God. Oh, God. And we worship you, Lord God. We put on the throne rooms of heaven, praise God. Flare down your mercy, Lord God. We got to have every bit of you on tonight, praise God. Oh God, we thank you right now. Hallelujah. I just reverence him. I worship him. I'm grateful for his anointing and his power in this atmosphere on tonight, praise God. We claim this atmosphere for the Lord our Savior, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, praise God. And we pray this gospel mission of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, Lord God. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah, Lord God. Ha. God, I thank you right now, God. And I want to thank God and praise him, praise God, for the angel of this house. Ha. Oh, God. Apostle Daryl Glenn McCoy, Sr. We thank God for him, praise God. We thank God for his leadership, praise God. Ha. We thank God for every sacrifice, praise God. And I thank God for his beautiful, lovely wife by his side, elect lady Dorothy McCoy, praise God. And I thank God for her, praise God, all the saints, all the brethren, all the elders. 
all the ministers, the apostles, the preachers, teachers, and reachers, God. Charmaine, Sister Charmaine, thank all the musicians, praise God, all the prophets and elect ladies, whoever, amen, my sisters in Christ, thank y'all, praise God, for sharing this moment with me on tonight, praise God. My brothers, praise God, thank y'all so much for traveling near and far. Thank you. Hallelujah, praise God. Hey, glory be to God. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God. We just give God praise and honor. Like I said, y'all can have your seat, praise God. Hallelujah, Lord God. You know, it's every time that we have to come together as women, praise God. Do you know we can't do this by ourselves? There is no way we can do this by ourselves. I was looking at this recipe I make, and God was showing me we all are many members, but we are so unique. Everything about us is so special and it's needed, praise God. I look at, we need the two cups and two tablespoons of flour. We need the one teaspoon of baking soda. We need the half teaspoon of salt, praise God. We need the stick and a half of butter, praise God. We need the one cup of brown sugar, Lord God. We need the half a cup of white sugar, praise God. We need the two eggs at room temperature, praise God. Hallelujah, praise God. We need a teaspoon and a half of vanilla fragrant, praise God. And we need all that to be blended in together to make one, praise God. We can't do it without each other, praise God. Then we need to put two cups of chocolate chips in there. Then go then we need a one cup of black English walnuts. Any walnut won't do it. We got to stir that around, praise God. And then we got to be laid prostrate on the cookie sheet and get ready to go through the fire with each other. If one person is hurting in the heat, we are all in the heat. This is not no separate thing, praise God. Well, why you only need one and a half teaspoon of vanilla? Because vanilla, you so potent, we can only take a half teaspoon of a time. But there's sometimes we need the whole two cups and two tablespoons of the flour. But it all comes together. We're all needed, praise God. And when we go through that fire, you can't be complaining and mumbling and grain because that's our making process. God knows what he's doing. He put us all together for a reason. I can't do this without you. We can't do this without each other. We got to be one. We got to be milled together as one and go through our making together. We're not alone vessels. No man is an island. No man stands alone. We stand together, women. We are one body, praise God. We are one cookie patch of dough. Amen. And when you get in that oven, when you're ready, and you got to be in there, sometimes God may take you out at eight minutes because he needs you to be a chewy cookie somewhere. Sometimes he may leave you in there for 10 minutes because he wants you to just meet him and chew on inside, hard on the outside. Then sometimes you got to do the whole 16 minutes where you're a little bit crunchy. But someone needs that particular making of you, us together, praise God. So we're in this thing together. And when you get out the oven, you don't come apart. It's not like, oh, I'm out of here now. No, we stay together in this thing. One army, one fight. The almonds can't jump out the cookie. That's illegal. You got to stay where you're planted and stay where you put because God is serving you to somebody. Do you know someone was sm smelling why you was being made? He smelt your making, praise God. Someone was hungry and thirsting at the righteousness, smelling you while you're being made out the oven. Right there waiting for you to come out, praise God, and waiting for you to cool off so you can be so you can serve somebody. All that to serve somebody in this hour, praise God. But we have to do it together. Trumpet and Zion is one ministry, and we're doing this together. Together. We're going to read, uh, you know what? And I know I'm supposed to be here, praise God. Whatever, however God's going to use me, we're going to thank God for it. But pull on me. Pull on God. Please get what you come to get. Don't drive this far and leave back with nothing. Pull on God. He put something in me for somebody. Pull on me. Please pull on God. Hallelujah. Praise God. You know what? I had a dream before I came here. I wasn't supposed to be here today. It was God's assignment. I would be on my way on a plane to Hawaii. My sons and stuff set up a trip a year ago. And I had told everybody, I won't be there this year. You know, I had already set the mandate out. But when God's mandate ain't your mandate. 
Come on, praise God. Hallelujah, praise God. And what was so crazy, and I never do Sister Clever like this. I started asking her a bunch of questions. Go, well, Sister Clever, can you? I said, what? I said, well, what day is it? What time is it? What's the scripture? What's the word? What's the verse? I never took her through so many questions, you know, thinking about her wife. But I thank God for uh, her love and, and praise God. But I said, I told them. And then, you know, she was saying, she said, I think it's Revelation 12. Because I heard her going through some paperwork. I said, why does that sound familiar? And I tell you what, while she was doing that, God brought a dream I just had a few days ago. And in this dream, there was a black Jeep. I've never seen nothing so black in my life. It was so black, it was almost beautiful. But it was a black dream, and it was driving erratically in the atmosphere. We wasn't even on the earth. It's in the atmosphere. And you know, one of the part of my, who God made me to be, who he's developed me to be, is a, he said, a root seer. And so I really don't deal with the fruit of stuff. I deal with the root of it, where it's coming from, praise God, what God showed me to intercede in prayer, you know. And so and most of the time in the dreams and the vision he's given me, I'm just looking and showing what He's, what he's revealing to me what to do next. So what happened, the Jeep was driving erratically, and then it just pulled up in front of me, and all four doors opened, and these little black, really black, black, demonic-type men, they jumped out the Jeep. And when this man, the, the one that was driving, when he jumped out the Jeep, he had an a art tube. You know, we put posters in and stuff like that. He had a tube. He said, I'm looking for so-and-so. And I was stepping back, and I, was, and I was scanning the atmosphere, and I didn't see this person. He said, listen, he was real evil and mean and nasty. He said, I got to find her. She's, we just got a divorce. You know, I, I don't like her. I don't want her no more. But she was an artistic woman, and she drew a whole lot of pictures across the wall. And I'm just looking for her so I can give her her pictures back. Help me find where she's at. Someone, and people started looking for her. But when I stepped back and I was looking, but you know what? And he, I seen him jump. Everybody didn't respond quick enough. So he jumped back in the vehicle, all him and those deep black, I can't explain how they look, demonic look, jumped. It was such a, 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 a sense of meanness and, nat and evil and murder. But they jumped back in the, in the Jeep and they sped off. And then I woke up. And the first thing I said, God helped me to notice, is that this woman that he was looking for was so covered, you couldn't even see her in the spirit realm. I don't think you heard me. She was so covered, you couldn't even see her in the spirit realm. I looked all through, I couldn't see. He had her so covered, you couldn't even see her. And so when that hit my spirit, and when God brought that to me, I said, yes, ma'am, I'll be there. And then I said, well, you know what? I'm still trying to, maybe I can kind of balance this Hawaii thing and catch the plane. And I said, uh, I usually stay, y'all know me, I usually stay for the whole matter, the beginning and the conclusion. So I said, well, um, I'm going to leave on Saturday morning. But then I got when my sister was ministering on Saturday morning. And we need each other, praise God. And I said, well, maybe you can give me enough strength to leave there and make it back to Gulfport to catch the plane. Then I said, you know what, God, what do you want me to do? He said, cancel the trip. And I, and I know my family was kind of feeling some kind of way, but I said, I, I will not be able to go. And I had people saying, but you're going to miss Hawaii? I said, I would rather miss Hawaii than to miss God any day. And then not a week later, <laughs> where I was going got burnt down anyway. Hallelujah. It just pays the old God beforehand, before he got to make you do it. Where I was going got burnt down. So I'm glad to be here, praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God, in front of my sisters on tonight, praise God. Amen. But uh, let us turn to Revelation 12, 1 through 9. Thank you, Lord God. Oh, let me get there. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Revelation 12. Verses 1 through 9. We're going to be so covered that the enemy can't even, no one can find us. And they, even in the spirit, a seer can't find you. That's how covered 
we're going to be in Jesus' name. Praise God, women. Amen. Revelation 12. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And she, being with child, cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his head. And his tail drew the third of the stars of heaven, and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And she brought forth a man-child, who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness, where she had a place prepared of God, that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and threescore days. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought in his angels, and prevailed not. Neither was there a place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He, has cast, he was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Praise God. Amen. You know, uh, I was looking at, you know, America, within the world, we're in an active war zone right now. I don't know if you've been watching the news. I don't really don't watch it a lot, but we're in an active war zone. America right now is in the national, a national threat for America is the, the yellow. We're in the yellow zone right now, which just means that it's, it's escalating. And they even put New York in the orange zone, which, the, which is high. That because, you know, these regions, whether it be national or spiritual, they got openings, they got doors that the enemy comes through. And New York is one of those doors in this country that the enemy comes through. So New York is on, the, on, on high alert orange and America's on yellow. So it's saying be alert. You have an active shooter in the atmosphere. Whether it's naturally or spiritually, you have an active shooter. Satan is in the atmosphere. You have to take cover. You have to be alert. And if you're not covered, you're going to get hit. Your covering is so very important, and we're going to talk about that. You know, I was, and God showed me a lot of things. I was getting ready to get into my bed in late September. When I pulled back my cover, I seen an open vision, and God said, get a piece of paper and draw it real quick. And I was drawing this part of, this, uh, part of land that I, like I seen it on the map somewhere before, and there was a river going up through the middle of the land, and that was flowing. He said, make sure the water is flowing. And then across this land, he put a woman's uterus. And on this uterus, the ovaries were marked out. And then I said, God, what is that? But the next day or two, he said, put Gaza Strip on there. And so when I looked at that and opened up the map, what I drew was a section of where Israel and Jerusalem and Gaza Strip is at. And he's saying, and, they, and right now, they're in active war. Well, they've been like this because they're still fighting over one piece of land on a holy site that they're fighting to resurrect a temple of God. And God is saying, I'm not coming back for a temple made with the hands of man, but they're still fighting over a natural temple. God destroyed that a long time ago. We are his temple right now. So they're still fighting over the old stuff. And what God is saying, I'm sending my word to that land. This is natural. I'm sending my word. And in the water, it was full of sperm. So I'm, I'm sending life in this land. But when I hit the uterus, the woman, the nation, the church over that land, there's nothing for me to snatch on to. There's nothing in there for me to reproduce my word into to bring the life in that country. And that's the same thing represented in the church with the women. There's a stronghold over the body in our women that's not being reproductive, that's not producing. The ovaries have been shut down. I'm sending word, but I'm not latching on to nothing where I can produce. We're going around here with fake birth pains. Our bellies are swelling with no babies up in them. 
We're getting all kind of sperm, all kind of word, but it has nothing to hook on to because we don't have a covering. Because we do not have a covering. Thank you, Lord God. And uh, I say a stronghold. We've been, if, you, if you know any atmosphere later, you've been coming in, it's been such a fight just to minister in that atmosphere. And a, we got to say a stronghold is something where the enemy, we have allowed the enemy to come in and set up his base operations. His base operations. That's what a stronghold is. In this atmosphere right now, there's a cloud, a stronghold, where the enemy has set up shop, like not even moved or worried about it. He's in the church with it. Let me share something with you. Oh, you say, so I got a lot of dreams. <laughs> but God showed me something maybe about two months ago. And I was in the midst of a stronghold. I was sitting, I was a partaker, I was a resident of a stronghold. And I was inside this stronghold. And I don't know if you ever, maybe you watched a TV program or maybe you had some life experiences, but when you go to a police department, sometimes when they're investigating a matter, they'll have something called a murder board. And back in the day, it used to be this big board, they used to take uh, little Polaroid pictures of people they thought was in the crime, trying to figure out what happened, who got killed, and all that. But on this murder, this murder board, murder, y'all, I'm from the country. Y'all help me now, because I, I stammer some a little bit. Y'all help me. God, you stammerers, y'all. <laughs> but praise God, it's a big murder board. On two thirds of it, it was filled with women's pictures, thumbtacked to the board. I was in the midst of those pictures. I'm like, what am I doing? And then on only one third, there was only one picture of a lady. And I said, why are we, why? And everybody, and all those who were on that board was inside the atmosphere. And then there was Satan was in this atmosphere, dressed almost like a priest. He had on a tank top. I hate to call this thing. I do not like this word but they call them wife beaters. I hate that word. I, I do hate it. What's the name of it, sir? Tank, oh, hallelujah. Tank top with a little one-inch straps. Thank you, tank top. Amen. And he had like suspenders hanging on to the side, just sitting back, just kicked back. Let me tell you, this man was so not worried about us in that atmosphere as far as escaping. He didn't have a concern in the world about us going nowhere. We've been so long down there in bondage that we got used to the bondage, right? And that stronghold is right in our minds. That spiritual soul is sitting right up in your mind. Satan is base camp in operations right in the midst of your mind, ain't moved and concerned about you trying to get free. But then when I was in there and he would just sit back looking all raggedy, like he was like broken and belching, big old belly, looking crazy. But then a light came through the stronghold. And it was two women, and they, were, and they was reaching their hands out toward me. And it confused me, because that was my way out. That word that they was ministering was my way out. But I was so used to being in this stronghold, I got confused. I was looking at him, looking at them, and then the light started dimming. But then a little twirl went around like, a, uh, like you're getting ready to do a fire or something like that in the firehouse, a little light went around, a bell rung, and then he jumped up. When I say he transformed himself from that homely looking person to this like a mega preacher look, and he was running out the room again, not worrying about us, I said, wait, and I asked him this question, and he was running out the building. He said, what do you want? I said, who is the lady sitting by herself? And he walked away, he turned around, he said, you can't win them all. Hallelujah. You cannot win them all. So I'm telling you tonight, pra hallelujah, praise God. Satan can't win us all, praise God. And it's going to take that word, it's going to take you accepting, receiving that light, because the word is what's going to break every demonic stronghold, every controlling spirit, every ruling spirit, if this word in here on today, if this word in this crusade, if the word is going to break every yoke, it's going to be destroyed by the word. There is no wall that Satan can make that God's word won't penetrate through. 
Hallelujah. Come on, praise God. Not one single wall that God can't help you right where you're at, praise God. But you have to want it. You have to believe it. You have to receive it. Amen. Praise God. And let God do the work. And I was looking, and, I, and then if you look at it, he was saying, in, uh, when we're uncovered, it's just like being spiritually assaulted over and over and over again. Like being spiritually raped over and over and taken advantage of over and over again. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about what happened to me. We, but we're going to turn to Genesis real quick. Just real quick. Genesis 1 verses I'm going to tell you how Satan works. And you see in that verse, he said that old serpent. So this ain't nothing new. So let's go back and let's, and if we, we have to, what thing God always tells me is that y'all don't, we, we don't know him like we think we know him. We don't know ourselves like we think we know ourselves. And we sure don't know our enemy like we think we know Satan. He is diabolical. He's out to murder, steal, and kill. And it's a serious hour right now. Even in the military, when I fought with the war in Baghdad, one thing I knew about the enemy, he knew us better than we knew him. He knew everything about us, our likes, our habits, on his territory. And he used every one of them to the T. He knew Americans don't like to be away from their families. They don't like to be vulnerable. They can only take so much stress and so much press. Only take so much. So they were, and they knew that they, they, they liked their little animals. They liked their little, their little children and stuff. So when we first got to our Baghdad, that's how they was killing us from our vulnerabilities. We'd be driving over there in them tank trucks, and but then they would have a little dog out in the street. And sure enough, a soldier would pull over to get the dog. 20 dead right there. Go down a little further, week or two. A little girl out there by herself. Oh no, who's little girl? Americans. Boom. They'll put a bomb on a child in a minute and think nothing of it. What do you think? If that's the natural world. What do you think Satan will use against you? What you have an inclination for? Your vulnerabilities, your child, your pet. He don't care what he use. Boom. And keep it moving. And so we got a lot of flack when we came back because they got wind that Americans was driving convoys running down kids, running down dogs. Because they didn't know that if you didn't kill it, it killed you. You have to suck some things up. Some people are going to have to die. And I know that's hard. Some people that you hold on to, some things that you cherish to, it's going to have to die. If you want to live and, do, and be walking in God's mandate word, in this hour, some of your stuff is going to have to die. And you got to be the one to do it. Come on, praise God. Genesis 1, 26 and 27 reads, And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth on the earth. What did God say let them have? Dominion. I'm just seeing what y'all with me. Dominion, praise God. And said 27, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, and male and female created he them. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it and have again dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And go with me to Genesis 3, 1 through 6, please. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field. That old serpent, talking about the same one, which the Lord had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, have not God said ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said ye shall not eat, eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Hallelujah. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die, for God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, 
Then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took the, of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. Verse 15. And the Lord said, And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shall bruise his heel. Father God, in your son Jesus' name, God, God, touch my mind, touch my heart, touch my spirit, God. Help me to stay in the heavens, Lord God. Don't let me come down for one ounce of this crooked flesh, praise God. Help me to stay on your mandate word, praise God. Bless the people with what you have for them on today, praise God. And I thank you, God, for your loving kindness and your mercy and your grace, praise God, for saving a sinner like me. Thank you so much, Lord God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. I want you to know today that God is a God of order. And you have to understand the order. You have to understand the mandate of God in the land. It has not changed. I don't know who all seen that live stream the other day in Slidell uh, with Apostle McCoy when he had the people standing up, the man and two men and a woman and a, a child. It was, it, it was the, the visual was so beautiful. The head man would represent the light. The second man represented the word. And then you had the woman and then you had the child. And they were in order order and it was so beautiful because women you got to know that you are you you are so valuable god made you in a way that you are productive in the things god you are the only one woman that god has made that he can put a seed inside of you and you can make another one of him do you know how valuable you are you can reproduce god's glory in the earth through this machine right here this beautiful vessel right there, God can speak a word, speak a word, ain't even got to touch you, and you can produce life. You can, your husband or whomever can give you anything, you can give back to him life. You, he can give you some, some food, and you can give him a meal. He can give you a few sticks, and, he, and you can know how to make a home. You are productive in the, uh, keeping this earth dressed and made up. This earth is your house. And whatever's placed inside, you just spoke. The word is so powerful that when it speaks, it brings life. It brings healing. It brings deliverance. And that comes through this vessel called woman. That life, you are, I don't care what no man say, you are needed. You are needed. That's why the enemy had this assignment of planned planethood, perversion, lust, be all you can be. I don't need a man. That's why those assignments, those demonic assignments of control and witchcraft are in this atmosphere right now because you don't know who you are and the value you are to the body of Christ, the value you are to God, your Lord and Savior. He's saying, I need you. I'm in this crusade right now Tell you that I need you to produce me in the land. I need my love out there, my righteousness, my peace, my joy. I bring it through you. I thank God for the man. I thank God for the stance that they take because we need their government. They keep the governing rule in the land while we help them dress it and keep it up. But the light, Christ is the light. He's the head of man. That light turns around and man becomes a living word inside a man. And man takes that living word and give it to the woman and it produces God's glory in the atmosphere. Ha! Hallelujah, Lord. Hey! Hallelujah. You are valuable. That's why you cannot afford to be out of order. Ha! You can't afford to be uncovered. Because uncovered, you are naked. How you no dignity. And these demonic spirits are raping us inside and out. Can you imagine Satan being cast down in Genesis? Angry and upset, lurking in the darkness. And he looked over because God made an open show. He ain't hid nothing from the devil. Don't think he don't know what he's doing. He's looking at God. I done been cast out. And I'm looking at God on his knees, open from this nasty dirt and blowing his presence inside. In other words, I'm looking at my replacement being made. But I can't touch it. 
I'm looking at what he's doing. And then he's going to take his insignia, his stamp, and stamp it on this man's soul. And he looked just like him. My exact image, everything that comes with the image, with the power, everything from heaven is on God's image. And it's stamped on man. And he's looking at this, probably saying, am I a dog that God would make something from this dirt to replace me? But I can't touch it because he got a covering around it. But then he's still looking. Adam is naming everything going on. But in just a few more days, God laid the man down. <laughs> Jesus. He stopped time to lay this man down and said, I love my creation so much, I want to make more of it. Hallelujah. I love my glory so much, I want to make more of my glory. It wasn't just about Adam liking somebody. I laid him down and I pulled from him. Get up, Adam, see what you got. Woo! Eve. But Satan, but Satan know God. Adam thought, Adam probably should have known God like he should know God. Oh, a bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. Good God, it's Eve. But Satan said, nah, I'll work with God. It's always more with God. It's always something else with God. It's something more. I don't know what it is. It's something more than her beauty. It's something, when you can get a man that see it, it's something more than your beauty, you got something. Ha! You really got something. And he's like, he's watching her, but I can't, I can't get to them unless they give me an opportunity. But I'm, something about, but then he starts seeing Adam give Eve stuff. Eve, give me, make me a fruit pie. I'm just making up stuff, y'all, come on. I wasn't there. So Eve go, Adam give her the fruit, she makes the pies. Eve, we need this. Give her some sticks and stones. She make them a chair and make them a bed. Man, Eve, you're just awesome. Praise God. But every time Eve go to collect some of those fruits from those trees, she keep passing one tree. And Satan watching her pass this tree. But see, it's that cure. Women were built to notice stuff. We were built to notice and record it to a T. Can play it right back to you. I seen a little study on men the other day, how men and women greet each other. They had two men come up there and they just shook him, hello, brother. That's it. There's no thought in their mind. It's just empty. They say hello, and then they go. Women, I can shake this with a hand, and within those three or four seconds, tell you everything about her, what she had on, how she was looking, if she felt some kind of way, if she looked some kind of way. I can tell you everything, how, what cologne she had on, what shoes she had on, we notice things for a reason. We can notice everything. I, there was a lady, we was talking one day, and I was trying to get her to remember something that was said in, we, to, to us to each other about the word. And I was telling the girl, it came to pass. She go, when did you say that? Why she asked me that? You remember that day we was in church, we were sitting on the third pew, and remember you had on that black and white dress, and you were saying that it was sticking to your leg, and you wanted to go turn it off, and you had on that red shirt, and you said you was hungry, but your stomach was hurting you, and, 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 and that, that chair, remember I picked up that, that it was like a, 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 a handkerchief somebody left behind right there, that day. Oh, listen, hey, brought it back to, hey, don't challenge me. I need you to know what I'm talking about. Hey, I brought the whole day back to it like I was there, and that happened like months ago. We noticed things. We record it, and we keep it with us. Like Pastor said, it's hard for a man to sit there and go toe-to-toe -to -toe with us. Amen. When it comes to remembering something, come on, Will. Come on, honey. This is how it happened. You remember? We met. When you hit that remember when, it's over with. He, he might have just come get an agreement or whatever. It's over with. But anyway, because they just move on to the next point. But uh, So he's watching how it's something, every time she go by that tree, she get closer, and she has an inclination to this tree. And she may be thinking, I'm making up some, y'all follow with me. She could, may be thinking, uh, that fruit, it looks nice, but, you know, we can't touch it. But, but he's watching her. The enemy is watching you, watching your habits. Watch what you're taking an inclination to. He's studying you because you have to give him the place to come in and begin to build his stronghold and his thoughts with thoughts because we're intimate. 
It starts with the thoughts that we are given and spoken to us. So Eve, finally, he see how she's just getting so curious. She's getting closer and closer. He said, there it go right there. He said, ma'am, hey, yay. And she turned like, hmm? I see you looking at that tree. Uh, did God say uh, not y'all for not to eat up that tree? Really? She said, well, now we, you know, and y'all know the, the, the conversations and stuff like that. But that is all that it took for us to give him. That's all he needed to get your attention and start bringing back trans information, communication. That is what's planting that seed into the original spiritual ovaries. That's what's producing that seed right there. But it didn't take long that she ate, you know, when she ate the fruit. And then nothing happened until... She gave the fruit because she was deceived. She was used, sex, spiritually, sexually assaulted, and took what she produced from that and gave it to her husband. Now, the husband, he took time to name all the animals. He knew they all had the animal. Each animal had an animal of their kind. So he knew there was a man, there was a female. He knew what they produced. Lion, lioness, lion cub. He knew how they cub looked. So what was wrong with Adam when he took that seed? He knew it didn't look like him. He knew he was after God's kind, and he knew what he was getting was not God. That's why he disobeyed. He knew that was not God's word. He ate into his system. That's when they became naked. That's when they lost their clothing of obedience, fell off, and they was naked and ashamed. They lost their dignity. You lose your dignity when you're in disobedience. You lose your freedom. You lose, you start to begin to fear. Fear comes in. Anxiety comes in. The fear of rejection, the, the fear of not being wanted, the fear of death comes in. Sickness and, 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 and uncleanness all that floods in where obedience was protecting you from all those things in this earth. You are covered in your obedience. And then the sad thing about the order, when Satan can talk you out of order, one of the main person that gets hurt is that child. That child that you uncovered, you're the mother, you're ministering to this child, you're teaching you train this child who they are, where are they going, who God is, who their father is, who you are. You're showing them the order and the structure of God. Then when you're out of order, the child is out of order and lost, and the whole house is tore up. The church is tore up. The community is tore up. Because of your power, woman, it says you can pull a house down, woman. You, 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 if we can get our uterus back functioning right. If we can get our uterus back, our ovaries back into production right. And I'm talking about spiritually, praise God. But you say, well, I don't get it. How is Satan, but we're owned by God. He, he saw God make us. How is he able to, to pull God like that? Let me, I know God's our owner. Who knows God's your owner? Got the title to your vessel. Listen to me. That has nothing to do with the shrewdness of Satan. Satan, it's like a car. Satan don't need your title to drive your car. All he needs you to give him the keys. It ain't got nothing to do with a title. All he needed you to put those keys in your hand. We sing a song, Don't Let the Devil Ride. Because he let him ride. Oh, he's going to drive. Not want to. He's going to drive and have you driving to you to places where you don't want to go, where you don't want to be. Crying when you get there. The pastor said, crying when I get there. Crying when I get through. And then go back again. Because you're no longer in control because you gave him access. Now you have a stronghold. Come on, praise God. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God. But you got to understand, when you do that, the cost of what all you lost. You cannot get confused. Just because God permits something to happen don't mean there's an ordained blessing from it. I gave them what they wanted, but I sent leanness into their souls. Now they're spiritually weak. They ain't got no fight. 
for anything. Now we are spiritually weak in the body of Christ. And sometimes we look at people on the outside and we mistake busyness for power. But most time when people are busy a whole lot, that's just covered in masking up that weakness is in them. No anointing, no power. They operating out of skill. And God is in my church. God got a man that, you know, when I came to Trump and Zion, I'm going to say a little bit about myself and I'm going to move on. Maybe about six years ago from Oklahoma, when I got here, I was dead on arrival. And I didn't know it, though. That's the stuff about them strongholds. You don't know you are dead on arrival. You don't know you're not who you think you are. You don't know you're not as saved as you think you are. You don't know you full of demons. And that's how I got here. And it was everybody's fault except mine. For all I know, I was saved and sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost. I couldn't tell you what day it was when I got saved. Because, you know, you always hear everybody saying, well, it was this day 20 years ago. I was on the morning bench. I ain't never had those days. I just said, well, I got, I'll start going to church at this day. So I just assumed I was saved. But to, to, to go back, when I walked in the trumpet in Zion, and y'all might hear him talk about uh, Mother McKinney sometimes in some of Oklahoma. I used to go to that church also when I was younger. He, Apostle probably left maybe three or five years before I started going, okay? But when I got there, I, had, I didn't know anything about deliverance. Matter of fact, the only reason I, I went there because my baby daddy went there. That's the only reason why I ended up at that church. So you know how that goes. You know, I'm coming in with the flesh. But anyway, after a while, that word started ministering to me, but I didn't know nothing about spiritual warfare. I know nothing like that. So I was there about five or six or seven years, and then it, di it didn't help that my mother, she didn't go to the church because she was in the world at that time before God saved her, had slept with half the women's husbands inside the church. And it didn't help that I looked just like them. So I, already, I was already a marked target. They would say, like mother, like daughter. You know, that's, that's all I heard. And they was just mean. But I didn't understand spiritual warfare, and God did not let anybody but maybe one lady who was going through to take a liking to me to try to cover me. I am the product of many mothers. At some stage of my life, many mothers had their hands on me because my mother wasn't able at that time to be able to raise children. So I, I was bounced from house to house. I wasn't in uh, foster care, but I was in mother's care. And I'm always grateful for mothers for doing, taking other people's child in understand that they have a need and thank y'all so much I've always tried to tell mothers thank you thank you thank you but anyway so long story short from space of time I've had enough I said you know what if this is what holiness is and God is I don't want it I can make it on my own can you can you really can you imagine being in a, a war zone and you're in the the, the fall the, the the compound and you don't want to follow the rules you know what I'm leaving this compound. I'm going to find an, another compound to go to. But you just walk right into your enemy's territory. You walk right out of protection and to your death, pretty much, if God don't keep you exactly where you went to. And so I would go around. And one thing I learned about those, I call them those church streets. It ain't nothing to play with. A sinner has schooled me on something one time. He said, I, hardcore drug seller and everything, murderer, killer, everything. He said, do not, while you're out here, do not get involved with nobody from the church that's in a backslidden state because they don't kill themselves. That anointing on them will kill you. He said, I don't even sell drugs to them. If they come up to me, I said, no, nah, no, nah, partner, go on down there. He said, I got that much sense. Don't bother them. I remember one time I seen, I'm not going to call no names out because some of y'all might know them. But uh, I seen, I was calling myself, and I ain't been saved all my life. I'm, and, 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 hey, just finding out I just got saved a couple of weeks ago. You know, just, hey, hallelujah. I, I got my date now. I just got saved about two weeks ago. Amen. Just got delivered. Praise God. But uh, I was at this, I didn't go to parties, but I got wind one day that uh, my baby daddy was going to be at this party. And I need to talk to him about these two kids we got together because I ain't seen them. And so I just went, I was just hanging out on the park. I wasn't a drinker, nothing, nothing like that. But I wanted to really tell him something. And so you always got those friends that are going to help you tell somebody something. 
So he said, well, uh, Alicia, uh, drink these beers. Get you, get you pumped up. You're going to tell them stuff. I said, well, I don't drink. No, no. I'm telling you, these beers, they're going to do it for you. And I know what you got to say is important. Drink these beers. I'll never forget it. It was some hot Coke 45. Now, I don't know what that might mean to somebody. <laughs> you ever heard of it? But it was some hot Coke 45. And I was drinking them, and I ain't gonna buy beer. I said, well, it's, it's nasty and got foam on it. I'm just drinking that. I, I drank about, maybe, I made it to about maybe three, maybe close to four. I feel like, okay, not knowing nothing about beer. And so I'm sitting on that porch, but I was sitting on waiting on my baby daddy to tell him something. I seen a traveling evangelist, I'm not gonna call his name. He's real skillful in the thing that he do. Had a, 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 I, I seen, I've seen him come off the road, dragged inside the church on the altar, wanting God to bring deliverance. Because somehow, when you're out of order, you know your, your deliverance is not at the hospital. When you're out of order, you're going to make your way to the church. They used to drag him and lay him on the altar. They would preach over him, but they laid him on that altar, and God would revive him during that time, the same person. So I seen him over there talking to some ladies. I'm thinking, at that time, I didn't know people of the cloth had issues. So I was shocked. So I, was, and I, did, I didn't know then. I said, he is really faithful. He's out here ministering in this atmosphere. Oh my God, look at his dedication. I meant that. I was, and then I had left the church. I was, I was embarrassed. I'm like, oh, I hope he don't see me. Tore up from the flow up. I hope he don't see me. And then, just, just so Satan can fix it, this lady, my baby daddy's sister, walked up to me. He says, Alicia, you see that man over there? I said, I know, my God. He's, man, that's just wonderful what he's doing. He said, girl, what is wrong with you? That man over there getting his mac on. I said, you better not say that. I was scared. I said, you, you, you know what? You can't talk about a man of God. She goes, sit right here. I didn't know what she went over there and told that man. I don't know what she had, a little red cup in his hand. He was walking my way. I said, no. I'm like, well, I was so nervous. And by the time he got to me, but, you know, God will cover you in your ignorance. When he got to me, I was sitting down. He put his hand on my shoulder. I turned around and threw up all on that man. <laughs> It went everywhere. Everything came out. Brah. He go, I'll talk to you later. He, you know, he walked out. But God will cover you in your ignorance. And what he's saying, that you, got, you can't, when people are out there like that, we have to pray and cover them because they can kill somebody. It's so serious. There's a lady that left the church maybe last year. I'm telling you how serious this is. An anointed intercessor and she made it to the church because of what she was going through with perversion and she come to the church and God delivered her and set her free up under this anointing intercessor powerful woman but she started going through a couple of trials with her family and she let you go I, I just can't do this 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 TIZ stuff it's just it's I can't do it you know how they say I, I'm not against it but I, I just I, I can't do it it's, it's just it's too much restraints I, I can't do it. I just got to take a break. She left, went back to where her family stayed, but she was still calling me. But something started changing because she hadn't, she hadn't found a church home. Uh, all of a sudden, she was saying, you know, uh, I, I, I just can't find one that's right for me. So you're getting further and further away from what's been keeping you. Your covering, it keeps you. So now these old feelings are starting to come back up. And you ain't got no power or control over them without your covering. Whether you're married or not, this word, trumpet and Zion, is your covering, women. It's your covering. So, long story short, finally, God said, the next time she called, she said, well, I don't know what I'm doing. I got, you know, I got these feelings up. He said, only thing you tell from here on out is pray. Because that is her weapon toward what she's going through. And that was her gift, an intercessor. He said, you're going to have to pray to get your, find your way back to me. And I said, Sister, God just said pray. I can't pray. I'm not mocking nobody, but I, I, I can't pray. Pray right now. Well, oh, God, you, well, you can pray. Just say something. 
Don't just die. Just say something. I remember a famous singer was on her deathbed, a gospel singer, and someone came in and let us pray for you, mother. No, nah, don't pray for me. I did this for myself. I think she might have had cancer and has been spoken on her life. And she said, don't pray for me. I did this to myself. I said, God, don't let that be me. Pray for me. Pull me through this thing. Pull me out. That pride. So I'm listening to her saying, I can't pray. I said, okay. So it wasn't too much longer than that. When she came back and told me what happened, she was on her, because the last time I talked to her, she said, you know what? I deserve to be happy. That's what's taking us, a lot of us, out the church because we think we deserve something other than what God's mandate word in our life. I deserve to be happy. And, you know, bye. So, okay. Pray. When I talked to her again, she was, on, she was scared when she called me back. Scared. All, talking about pray, Sister Scott, on her way to this female's house, ready to do whatever they thought they was going to do, on her way there, anointed but out of God's will. The lady had a massive stroke, buffed her whole head open, wearing a cap to this day. You are dangerous, away anointed and not appointed. You will kill somebody when you're not covered. You have to stay covered in the world. You will hurt somebody. You, it won't even get you first. That's why you think you're getting away because ain't nothing happened to you, but you're killing people. You're hurting people. And it's dangerous to be out there anointed. Saul, you're out there anointed, but you're trying to kill everything around you. She was, and I'm going to tell you how you know it's just lust. It's not love. She came back scared. What am I doing? And I told her that's the dangers of being out there, not in the will of God, not covered. I said, have you checked on the lady? No, I don't check, I don't check her. I said, but she had a stroke. She had dead. No, I'm going to do with that. What happened to the love you had? You deserve to have love. They let you know that was perversion. That was lust. That wasn't love. We mistake abuse for love. That was not love. Now, this woman got to die because you was in lust. Someone got to die because you're out of order. And you're not even willing to go pray for them. What you did, prophetess. That's the danger about it right there. Praise God. But while I was out there, praise God, I, you know, I, regardless to what, you still have gifts and calling. And it's dangerous for you to be out of the will of God. And I was going into different churches and stuff. And I became that lady that was being dragged in and barely could make it on the pew. Because I was so abused and raped out there without no covering used by ministers. They would call me, prophets, what, 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 because they're not connected no more. What word is God giving you? I'm out of order. Oh, well, God said this right here. And they, I thought it was all right because I didn't know how to preach. And when they preach, it sounded good. So I'm thinking, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. There was so much, i never seen, I saw stuff out there as a woman, prophets, uncovered, now, I'm just with the Scott now, but this be probably just the title. I'm going to make you think I'm, think I'm anybody because I'm not without God. But anyway, I saw things that I shouldn't have saw as a woman, as a prophetess. I saw things going on in the, the pulpit area that I should have never known nothing about. I had to cover things I should have never had to cover. So many things happened that I, if I had been in place, I shouldn't have had to deal with none of that stuff, and I'm paying for the cost of it today. Today, I'm paying for the, some of the things that I saw. I'm paying for the things I couldn't say nothing about. Today, all, and there were so many different spirits in witchcraft and control and stuff. I can't help see what I see. I was immature. There would be ministers walking by me, and I didn't have no wisdom because I didn't have no covering to teach me how to use my calling. And uh, these big-time I dare not say their name, would walk by me. I said, when you walk by me, brother, a spirit of incest just walked by me. You know, just all, could have been killed. Just saying all kind of stuff, and I'm not thinking nothing of it. Oh, well, well, well prophets, I don't, I, don't, I don't know what you're talking about. I said, okay, I'm just, I'm just saying it. It's strong, too. You know, I'm just, no wisdom. 
No wisdom. Rebuking this man out in the open. No wisdom. You know, I'm not saying that God won't show you something and may with a wisdom uh, uh, share somebody with something or sometimes it's just for your knees. It ain't even meant to be said. It's just for your knees. What God show you, you're going to learn it's just for your knees. When you get out there uncovered trying to, trying to set, tell somebody a, re- a revelation, you finna kill yourself. You finna go through uncovered. But this same man called me back months ago. Prophet, what did God say again about that incense? In- incest? Little that I know is he had been not only had a wife and daughter, not only sleeping with his daughter, but sleeping with his spiritual daughters. And it finally come out to the open. So now he calling me, not for deliverance, for a cover-up. Can you come and take over the church until I get myself together? And I'm sitting there like, no! Because you're not trying to get yourself together. You're hiding. You're not trying to get the delivered. So these are the things that are out there. I've seen the, the, the robbing money, taking from the people, on drugs, taking women to their houses, the pictures and stuff. They send it to me. Do something about this prophet. I'm not nobody. I'm out of order. That assignment wasn't for me. Now I'm tore up. So when I, when I came to Trump and Zion, I weighed Sister Helen, probably Sister Helen's size are smaller. And everybody was thinking, oh, you lost a lot. You look good. They don't know. That was from cigarettes and crying. Oh, my bed. And lost my mind. Do you hear me? Lost my mind out there uncovered. Assaulted over and over and over and over. It just never stops when you're uncovered. And then I thought everybody else was the problem. And I didn't know it was me with that pride and that witchcraft controlling anger, unforgiving, you name it, spirit. It was me. I was the one hurting people. I was the one out of order. I was the bully. I was the mean and nasty one. My kids were scared of me. And when I left that church, I said, I'm going to start my own church. I done bullied them into a church. You're going to be the usher, you the choir, and you the, and you the, the, the deacon, and all y'all better have some paper taking notes. Y'all better tell me exactly what I said when I get through preaching. Horrible. I had, I got, y'all see my, I got tall, sir. They were scared of me. What kind of demon do I got to have that my kids are scared of me? What kind did I have that these big grown boys, 30-something, are scared of me? God Almighty Jesus, praise God. And I remember, I know Sister Elect Lady William talking about the hospitals back in the day, and they catching them babies, stuff like that. I was born in the, in the 1960s. And all these luxuries y'all have today, we didn't have those back then. I mean, when I went in every, because I, I wasn't saved, I was going to church, but I found out I was not saved. Just because you're going to church and active, that does not mean that you're saved. You're just going to church and active, and you don't know God like you think you know God. So out of all my five kids, every last one of them out of, out of wedlock. Not bragging, not boasting, but every last one of my kids I had out of wedlock. And so there was always a controversy over each child I had. It was always by the wrong person. But anyway, I went to the hospital. So I, I didn't get those little rewards. I'm, I'm in labor. Come meet me at the hospital. I was hiding. Sliding up in there to have the baby slide on back out because of who they belong to. That's my testimony. That may be another, another day. So this one time, I went in there low-key. My mom said, you ain't going to no, hey, don't tell nobody I'm up here. We're going to get in. We're going to get out. You know, and I know there's more to it, sister. <laughs> there's a lot more pain to it. But so when I go in there, there's certain rooms. But one thing, they're not taking you back to a room until you're ready back then to deliver. And you're going to, you literally think they're going to let you have that baby in that wheelchair. I'm like, my God, get me back to a room. And back then, them doctors and nurses did not play with you young women coming in there without no husband. You shouldn't have been in the way you had. I mean, right now, you can sue them and all kinds of right there, but they, listen, they didn't have no mind telling you that you was out of order, you shouldn't be in here single, and you're going to sit down there and wait until I get ready to take you somewhere. But anyway, then you go to what they call a prep room to get you ready, take all your stuff off, humiliate you, take everything off, put it in the bag, 
roll you in that room, stick everything to you, let you sit there. Medicine? Don't even, you, you ain't married? Don't even think about it. Ain't, no, ain't nothing like that. You can take those pains, every last one of them, and they did not care. And you in there, you in your labor room, they call it, and when they get ready, they see you getting ready to deliver. Then you got to go to a delivery room. It ain't just one-stop shop stuff. Then they take you to the delivery room, and then they catch the baby, all this kind of stuff. And then back then, you didn't get your baby right off. They caught that baby, and they went somewhere with it. And while you're going through so much, you ain't even asking questions. They just rolling you off to in the opposite direction into a postpartum resting room. For one thing, they, they want to make sure there was such a major close-to-death type of event that just happened, they need to make sure you're going to live and your child is going to live. And they don't put you back together until you've been strengthened and got enough to nourish each other. And that same thing when I looked at this Re Revelation 12, that when he sent us to a, a desert place, it's for our strength. It's for us to get back strength to some spiritual IV to get that word pumped back up into our life and get, make sure your baby that you just, because it don't belong to us. It belongs to the person who put the seed inside of us and it got to go back to who it I did my job. Now I'm talking spiritual now. I'm not saying abandon your kids, but it goes back to that person right there. But this is what God is saying. So when I, I got back there, what was so crazy about when I left, when I opened that door in Trump and in Zion, and I seen the head coverings, I seen the, the, the shouting. I said, oh, no, this is summit all over again. Nope, I'm not coming to this summit like church. But God said, we're going to pick up right where you left off. 30-year, 40-year gap. We're picking up right where you left off because you can't run from your making. But now you got something to tell somebody else now. I had to get back up, and, and then I'm so used to running Pastor told me, and, and your leader, he knows. Don't even play with him. He knows what God is showing you about him. People were asking me, uh, can you help us usher? Can you help us that? Every time I go, no. I said, I'm a little offended now. He said it back to back to back. Well, he, you know, he don't like me. And then the same thing I just read, y'all. I said, if he ministered off of Genesis 3 one more time, I'm gone. I mean, all in my flesh. I said, I'm not, I don't want to hear it now one more time. Because all he told me to do was sit on the bench and get the word and come to noonday prayer. Pray, word, pray, word. But do he know who I am? I'm, I'm, just, I'm real up in here. And I, got, I started sending him some videos. Oh, it's so embarrassing to tell it right now. I'm so embarrassed. Let, let, let me send him a clip who I am. <laughs> I'm so embarrassed. I'm glad he ain't here. I'm so embarrassed. He, he, he uh, responded back like, you know, sister, I really like what you said, but what, what do you think would be if you was delivered? I said, oh. I said, oh. <laughs> Woo. He ain't got to say much. God let me know, do not play the dangerous thing. I remember I wanted to do something one time. I'm telling you, God, 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 listen, I was, it was something simple. And during this time, Pastor would be over there at the studio, just a few years ago, be at the studio all the time making songs and stuff. And so every time I would try to call him about something with the, with the kids, it would always be a bunch of noise, and I didn't feel he was hearing me and stuff. So one day I got slick. I needed something from him, his approval, but I didn't know what he was going to say, and I really wanted it. So in myself, I said, this is how it happens, what I'm going to do, I'm going to wait till he gets to the studio where I know there's going to be music. I'm going to talk. I talk deep. I don't have no high-pitched voice, but I'm going to talk real fast in a high-pitched voice, make it sound good. He ain't listening no way. And uh, cause he would, it would always be on. So then he'll say yes, and then I'm good. Ring. Hello. The music. Ah, I got him. Yeah. Oh, yes, sir. I. He said, okay, hold on. I said, oh yeah. Solid cook, solid cook, solid cook. 
I don't know where he went in five seconds. When he got back on that phone, you could hear a pin drop. He said, now, uh, say that again. I said, um, uh, um, um, uh, you, uh, you, you know, the kid, he said, I don't think we're going to do that right now. Maybe, maybe some other time. Yes, sir. Well, when I got off the phone, it's like God had my ears. Okay, okay. You, you, you so slick. Come on. Oh, he, God took me through. I said, so I don't play with the man of God. My back on my phone, because I know he's my leader. He's my covering. I can kill my own self playing with him. And God let me know, do not play with him. On my phone, Apostle McCoy, do not play with him. I got a whole paragraph. He ain't your buddy. He ain't your friend. He ain't your ace kumba. A whole list to remind me, do not play with my order. And listen, God, we are God's temple. I'm going to share something real quick, and I'm, I'm going to get out the way, but God told me to share this with you. And we all know Ezekiel, you know, 8 through 11, but God was showing this is the condition of the church. It's not productive because of the women. The sperm is good. The sperm is good. But the uterus is dysfunctional right now. How long am I going to be in dysfunction? I built this house. I planned this house. I gave a plan and specs to this house. How long do you think I'm going to reside in a dysfunctional atmosphere? When you're not producing, I'll burn this stuff down. Y'all got to understand that when you got a war in the land, in the natural, it's already a war in the spiritual. It's, it's, like a, it's not real time. It's delayed time. You ever seen a newscaster talking, and then they want to talk to the person at the site, and it's a delayed reaction? They can hear them, and then a few seconds will pass by, and then that person will respond back. So what's going on in the spiritual? There's always a delayed time in the natural. It's already been done up here. It's already been said up in this, in this atmosphere right here. And we are humans with a bodily experience where heaven and earth overlaps. That's how powerful you are. You overlap. You got the spiritual. That's why Satan said, and even David, what is man that you're so mindful of them? Who, so minute of man. But he told Ezekiel, Ezekiel was in captivity in Babylon by the river with a house and a wife. Jeremiah was still in Jerusalem crying out for the people. Daniel was in the government officials in Babylon and then Ezekiel by the river laying on his side he just got through the 390 days. He was in the middle of the 40 days, and God said, let me show you why you're crying out. Let me show you why you, I got you crying out and getting ready to eat some bread or some dung. Let me show you why I got you doing these strange things. And then he was by, surrounded by elders around this man of God while he's crying out. And they're saying, what is God telling you? What is God showing you? God got sick of it. Said, let me show you, because I got to have a witness to what I'm getting ready to do, because I'm tired of my house being full of adultery and uncleanness. He said, come here, come here, come here. He just zoomed them out from there to the walls, the church atmosphere of Jerusalem. He said, follow me. Look, look at this, look at this, look at this. Look, 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 look. They got an idol of a statue right in the entrance of the door, right there, an image of jealousy to provoke me. No, 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 don't stop right there. Come here, come here, come here. Open up this wall. It's always a door, an entrance. It's always a door that the enemy can come in that you don't understand, that you don't know about you. You have a door that the enemy can come in. Open up this wall. Walk up into it. Tell me what you see. It's the elders. The same ones around me while I'm praying. They're behind these walls with idol worship in their own rooms, worshiping other gods, other images, images that are so detestable. In the house of God, it starts out with curiosity and it escalates. It starts out in secret 
And that, as that stronghold is building, you're going to get bold. You ain't going to be able to hold. I don't care what you do. What's done in the dark is going to come to the light. I don't care who you are. Look, what, I need a witness so people won't say, why did God do this? Look what they're doing. And then he said, look closer. He said, is that, is that the priest's son? The ring leader. Come on. Oh, no, 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 no. Don't stop there. Let me show you your women. They're on the sides of the walls, on the gates, crying out to idol worshipers. They call themselves prophets, but they have controlling spirits, and they witches. That's witchcraft. That's not prophetess. You're not a prophet. You're doing witchcraft, and you're leading my daughters away with that mess. You got your cliques. You got your groups. You're performing witchcraft. Hallelujah, praise God. And you're in error because the man and the priest is supposed to be along that wall, not you. So what are you doing? Um, that's, no, 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 no. Come, come, come here, come here, come here. Look out to the courtyard. Look, they didn't got bold now. The women are bold. The men are bold. They're out here between the porch and the altar, brazen altar, worshiping. Son, God, with a back against me in the open. No, 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 don't wait. No, 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 no. Come, come here. Let me show you one more thing. Because while, while all this has happened, you know, God got a chariot of, he, he, he got a, a ride, a chariot of cherubim with wheels beside the wheel that support his glory, support his altar. Anywhere he want to go, they line up. Where he go to the right, go to the left, they all move together. It was already warmed up, turned on, waiting for God and already called his chariot to get up, to get up out of here on. Before I go, I'm on the threshold, your doorstep. I just want to show you before I get out of here, I'm finna, because I can't do nothing in the church unless I leave. I can't destroy the church unless I can't destroy myself unless I leave it. So I got to get all the way out of it to burn it down. And God said, that's where I'm at right now. You are unproductive. So I'm, some of y'all don't even know I left. It was so bad, there got the priest, the false priest, he said, listen to what they're saying. They're around there saying that false priests giving the people false confidence in the land, saying God's not going to destroy you. Why would he do it to his own people? He's not going to destroy his church. He wouldn't do that like that. But God said their hearts are evil. They want something out of it. They want to steal your land. They want to steal your anointing. They're lying to you and got you thinking that you're going to get away with what you're doing. He said, and why? He said, go prophesy to this one right now. And while he was telling that those men of his era, one fell down. While he was talking, and it made Ezekiel lay out, God, you're going to destroy us all. Please. He said, now, nah, there's always a remnant of faithful people. If there's anybody out there that is lamenting for this mess, that is crying out, because we're all in this together, I don't care how goody two-shoes you are, we are all going down together. We have to lament one for another, because God promised that he's not going to destroy He's going to always have a seed for Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Are you a part of that lamenting? He said, I got these six men. He said, I want you to go out. It's done in the spiritual realm first. It's already been done. Go, first of all, a man with white linen and ink horn, go and mark the ones that you can find who are lamenting. Mark them who are lamenting. Then you go grab some cold, hot coals and spread it across this area. Their church, they love so much. He's on the threshold. One foot on the threshold, one foot on his ride is, wait, is waiting on him. And then y'all other six go out there and kill everything that has not been marked. Kill everything that has not been sealed. God got on his chariot, rolled out to Mount Zion. He said, I won't be back until I come into the person of my son rolled out. Already happened in the spirit. Angels already massacred souls in the spirit. 
Delayed but not denied. That ain't always good. And it's man here on the earth that he's rising up. He rose up Babylon and did exactly what he said in the heavens. He burned the whole temple down and killed everybody who didn't have a mark. And God told me in Revelation 3, and what's happened that those people were so rich, the 14th, they got everything they needed, that self-ambition. They had no need for nothing and didn't know they didn't have God. They were so rich with their black wool, they made banks. They were so rich with their eye slabs that they had medicine schools. They had no need for nothing that they say. Nothing at all. They, their black wool garments, their, their eyes, all their, all their money, all their, all their banking, but never realized they didn't have God no more. Again, in that story, I'm at the threshold. I, I gave them permission for what they got, but it wasn't ordained for, the, for a blessing. Ordained for, but with them, he told them the same thing. I stand at the door and knock. How many opportunities, how many times before God left did that pastor lean on your shoulder? Be careful. Be strong. Hold on. How many times did that leader have you in his office communicating with you, praying with you, crying with you, on the phone that didn't nobody see? How many times did maybe he, he had to sit you down for two weeks, three months, six months, a year? How many times did he try to work with you? How many times did he said, turn Alicia over to Satan? Turn her, just turn her over there. Because so, when, I joined, I, when I joined the army, this is exactly what a pastor told me. And I didn't understand back then. But he told my pastor at the time, he said, sir, because he was here just mourning the loss of his daughter, died 25 from an asthma attack. He said, sir, she's going to have to go to man's army to obey because she does not know how to obey spiritual authority. So I got to send her to the army to learn how to obey natural authority first. That I thought I was going to get my son out of the atmosphere that was in, but I was going to learn order, to learn structure, to learn what it means to one fight, one team. And when the decision is made, it's made. One of the brothers from Slidell the other day, I thought it was so beautiful. I'm going to sit down here and say one more thing. He said he was talking to the pastor about something about, I'm just going to make up something. He was saying, like, uh, they had to haul hay. He said, Pastor, I got this, this black truck. I, I researched for three months for the load we got. It's going to happen. I talked to the people. We can use this truck and, and air, all kinds of stuff. He, did, he, he, he worked on it. And he said, Pastor said one thing to him. And while he was still walking, nah, let's do white. That, and that was it. He said, let's do white. No explanation. No nothing. He said, what it is. What type of obedience and reverence do you have to have for your leaders that no matter what he says, white is what it is. That's what it is. That's what it is. Everything black got out of his mind is white. That's what it is. I, and I, I remember what he said, but God told me to share this with the people. For us to be delivered in this hour, we have to, we deal with unrepented sin and, un, and, and, and com confession your sins. Unconfessed sins and unrepented sins. You have to get to that point. You have to humiliate yourself in this word and say, you have to see yourself in this word so you can be restored and reconciled to where you were at in Eden. That dominion, that purity, that pureness, that cleanness, your reproductive spiritual system is back functioning for you to be destroyed. And he said to tell the people, he says a serious out. I said, I'm not playing with you. I've got true, I've already set up my true witnesses to go behind your closed doors. If you will be honest, to tell, to show me what you are doing behind, not even at home but in the church. I've already had my prophet, our prophetess, show me your lives. I'm over it. He said, and this is my judgment to the church. Trumpet and Zion fellowship. He said, trumpet and Zion 
is not just a name, but it's a word. It's a ministry. It's my word. And I have, I put my word in this man to reproduce it in the earth. So with it comes my authority. With that word comes my power. With that word, hallelujah, praise God, comes the major deliverance. Everything is not due to be full with. It's just not something you put on a kiosk. He said, since you're playing with my word, Trump and Zion, I'm, it's already been released in the land. I'm finna to destroy and kill those who are playing with my words. And I'm not playing. I'm serious. I am not playing. This is, I, I know I told a couple of laughs. This is the judgment for Trump and Zion. He said, you have made fashioned trees and sticks. You've dressed them. You've clothed them. You put jewels on them. And then you had the audacity with your idol gods and your idol worship, put my name on it. We got our smocks, trumpet and Zion. We got our t-shirts, trumpet and Zion. We got our handkerchiefs, trumpet and Zion. We have our social media pages, trumpet and Zion. We have our, our, our prayer lines, trumpet and Zion. He said, you're lying. you lying. I'm going to destroy you. It's my house you contaminate with your idol worship. But what he said, because this man of God cried out, lamented for your souls. Every time God sends judgment, 99% of the time, he sends a space of grace. That's why they have these altar calls that we don't, oh, we got to go there again. Whatever he released, he's get, you don't have time to wait. Well, when I get to the car, you know, I'll think about, is that me? Or when I get home, you may not have that time. In the heavenly realms, you're already dead. It's just waiting for the judgment, the delayed effect in the land. And I looked at, and I, I'm going to crawl, this is, I don't do this all the time, but God told me to do an altar call for you to cry out. If you find yourself, is it me, Lord? Hand me that real quick, sister. That little black tube. I'll tell you about my little black Jeep dream. And it puzzled me, because this is what that, that demon had in his hand. I got to find her to give this back to her. I got to find, I'm glad she left, but I got to find her. What's so evil about that? We uncover people. We don't even uncover ourselves. We uncover people. They, he can, if he can't get to you, I'll give it to her. You go find her for me. We uncover each other. I was at the, uh, sometimes you get new people coming inside the church. And listen, this is a deliverance ministry. If they come in here, they need deliverance. If we here, we need deliverance. It's not no court show. Somebody will come tell you quick, you know Sister Charmaine's single. You're uncovering her. The worst thing two undelivered people can do is get together. You got a mess in your church. You have a hot mess in your church. We uncover people. We tell where people live. We tell what they're doing. Let that man get delivered. That's why he's there. Let that woman get delivered. Quit uncovering people. You don't want that trial of an undelivered man or woman. Let them get delivered in this church. They're here for deliverance, not for you to play with. Do you know you can kill that person before they even get their help? Stop it. But I said, God, what kind of art? Because if she left, she... She couldn't have wanted it. And he got me up out of my hotel room the other day. I said, God, what was in there? And I opened it up. He showed me. The artwork that she left on that stronghold's wall is, you can't. Hey! 
say, hallelujah, Lord God. Say, God, hallelujah. Are you going to be the one today, woman, that says you can't win them all? If you will with me, please come to these altars. Hallelujah, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. For all those who will, praise God. Hallelujah, Lord God. Be that one. Hallelujah, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God. Hey, glory be to God. Lord, I may not know what my stronghold is, but I know through prayer and fasting, God, in this word, God, it'll turn out every demonic stronghold. There's not a wall. There's not a wall of evil that God can't penetrate, praise God. Hallelujah, Lord God. God, we got to have a miracle, Lord God. We've got to have a win, Lord God. We've got to have deliverance, Lord God. God, you sent a mandate road to the house, God. God, and you're not playing, Lord God. God, you're killing people, Lord God. God, you're destroying people, Lord God. And then, of course, God, man, women, children, it don't matter who you are. Hallelujah, Lord. Oh, God, 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 oh, God. Oh God, oh God. God have mercy here on tonight, praise God. God, you do everything oh, at one time and on time, praise God. Oh God, we thank you, Lord God. You don't make no mistakes, Lord God. You know what's in the house, Lord God. You know the idolatry, Lord God. You know the evil, Lord God. God, you calling it out right now, God. God, we got to have deliverance, Lord God. Hold it up, say God. Hey, hey, God. God, you said you'll spare. You'll spare the remnant, Lord God. You'll spare the one who's lamenting for their sins, praise God. You'll spare the one, God, that's repenting for them generational sins, praise God. You'll spare the one, praise God, that's repenting for those familiar spirits, praise God. You'll spare the one, praise God, that's repenting for those soul ties, God. Those things that God, they're in relationship with, they got more power over their lives than you, praise God. Lord, you pray, God, you said you'll spare the ones, praise God, that God that has been releasing curses out their mouth, praise God. According to the local, say God. In the local, God. According to the local, say God. God, we turn out every curse, praise God. According to the local, hey, 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 local, say God. Every soul tie, every unclean spirit, praise God. Every false prophet, God. Giving the people false confidence like this, everything is all right, God. No, God, no, God. You done visited my sin, God. You done visited my iniquity, Lord God. You telling me in my face, praise God. What you gonna do, praise God. God, I know it's me, God. I know I know it's me, God. I know it's me, God. But God, I'm embarrassed, Lord God. I'm ashamed, praise God. Take this pride away from me, God. Help me to humiliate myself in front of your presence, praise God. Help me get back in right relationship with you, praise God. Lord God, help me to humble myself. Help me be submitted to your will, praise God. And when I humble myself in prayer, God, and submit myself, praise God, your power comes through, God. Go to the local say, God. Lord, help me, Lord God. Don't let me sit up here and die when I don't have to, God. Yes, Lord, I'm saying, I'm in the hospital, Lord God. I'm in the saints' hospital, Lord God. I'm sick, Lord God. Yes, please, I'm not denying prayer. Pray for me. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. As I pray for myself, praise God. Get these demons out of my mind. Get these strongholds, God. Why well, I gave Satan access to my life. I gave him the keys, praise God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. When I know you're my owner, praise God. I cheated on you, praise God. Now my ovaries is messed up, praise God. I can't reproduce, praise God. I got to have a miracle, Lord God. I got to have deliverance, praise God. Fix it, Jesus. Fix it, Jesus. It's me, it's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord. It's me, Lord God. Tell God it's me, God. Tell God it's me, God. It's me, God. It's me, God. I got that pride, God. I got that unforgiveness, praise God. Oh, God, it's me. I got that controlling spirit, Lord God. I'd help me, Lord God. I don't want to lose my control, praise God. But God, I ain't nothing, praise God. I'm not running nothing, praise God. Get these demons about me, Lord God. Hi, hey, glory be to God. Hey, don't go say God. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Fix it, Lord. Fix it, Lord. Help us, Lord God. Oh, Lord God. Oh, 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 God. Turn this thing around, praise God. My healing is on this altar, Lord God. My deliverance is on this altar, Lord God. My word is on this altar, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God. Let me be the one 
Let me be the one to tell the enemy, you can't win them all, praise God. You didn't get me, praise God. God sent a word. He sent a word, praise God. You can't win them all, praise God. I belong to him, praise God. I don't belong to you, praise God. I denounce you right now, praise God. You've been disarmed in my life, praise God. You have no more power over my mind, praise God. But God, help me, Lord God. God, keep me, praise God. Help me to come back to the altar, praise God. All things going to keep me is this word and prayer, praise God. Jesus said, these things come now out, but by prayer command ye me. Hallelujah. Oh, God, let it be real to the people, God. Let it be real to the people, Lord God. Let it be real, Lord God. God, it's me. It's me with these demons, God. I know what you saw, God. I know what your prophet saw, God. I know what you showed him. I know what you showed her. Yes, it's me. Yes, it's me with my dirty self, God. Yes, it's me with my mean self, Lord God. Yes, it's me with this idol worship, praise God. Yes, it's me. It's me. Naked, God. Yes, it's me. God, and exposed, praise God. Yes, it's me out there, God. Oh, God. Thank you, God. Well, thank you, God. Thank you for your love, God. Thank you for exposing me, Lord God. Thank you for giving me a chance to get it right, praise God. You got to help me, Lord God. You got to help me, Lord God. Keep me covered. Keep me covered. Let me come back to my covering, Lord God. Let me come back to order, Lord God. Oh, God, oh, help me, Lord God. God, give me strength. God, I'm so sorry, God. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, God. God, I don't want you to kill me, Lord God. I don't want you to kill me and raise somebody else up in my place, God. God, give me another chance, God. Oh, hallelujah, God. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord God. Lamb it for your soul. Lamb it for your sins. Lamb it for the sins of your children, Lord God. Lamb it for your sisters, praise God. We in this together, God. If one go down, we all go down. Cry out, they need your strength. We need your strength. We need your strength. We need your strength. The kids are not covered. When we're not covered, hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Please help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Oh God, 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 fix it, God. Fix me. Fix my reproductive organs, praise God. So I can be of some use to the body of Christ, praise God. Oh God, don't deny me the privilege, God. To be up under your care, oh God. Oh, help these babies, Lord God. Help these mothers, praise God. Help these fathers, God. Help these leaders, God. Help these priests, praise God. Oh, God, please, God, give them strength, God. Give them strength, God. It's hard to manage an unimaginable woman out of order, praise God. God, give these men a love and a wisdom, God, to lead all these women, praise God. A little coach, God. Please, Lord God, let them be the priests of their home, God. The priests in the church, praise God. God, give them strength, God. I believe God going to give a man such a... Uh, I'm a wisdom, God, on how to lead us women, praise God. Even the more, praise God. God, we need them, we need them, we need them, we need them, Lord God. We need them because we out of order, praise God. God, let these men tell us the truth, praise God. God, don't let them sugarcoat on us no more, God, because God, you done sent judgment to the church, God. Many days hence, someone ain't going to make it because uh, someone don't think God is real. Somebody's not going to make it. Somebody's not going to make it. Don't let it be you, God. Don't let it be you. Don't let it be you. When all you got to do is truly repent from your heart. And God is just enough to forgive you. Just enough to forgive you. I'm sorry, God. I'm so sorry, God. It was me. It was me. I, I don't care who see it. I don't care who know it, God. It's me. It's me. And I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Dirty and unclean. I'm so sorry for the condition of my heart before you, Lord God. Please forgive me, Lord God. Please forgive me. Wash me, God. Purify me. Make me clean. Make me cover and keep myself. Because my covering is my protection, Lord God. Please let me be covered. In Jesus' name I pray. And I thank God for all things. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. 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 Let's reverence him. Hallelujah. Let's reverence him. Hallelujah. As I turn, amen, the service back over. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. 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 Halleluj
Hallelujah. Move by your power. Move by your might, Lord God.